prove very, very difficult for a lot of the younger generation today, you know. So, I mean, he has a lot of the other lads still waiting yeah. in the wings, you know. So it was a, bit, a, a baptism of fire for a lot of the younger generation. But I'm sure he's going to stick with him throughout the league campaign. He's got to find new talent. He has got to give fresh faces the opportunity to try and get on the, on the senior squad. OK, Tomas, thanks for that. Now, next here on the programme, we're going to head back to last night. Well, the floodlights were on at the Gaelic grounds in Limerick, where the home county took on Cork. Reporting on this one is Joanne Cantwell. Justin McCarthy's unknowns had surprised many in their gutsy defeat to Galway last week. But after Offaly's loss, Joe Dooley had warned that Cork would take some beating this year. And with barely three minutes on the clock at the Gaelic grounds, the Rebels showed why. The slitter breaking for Michael Cusson, and the big man showed he knows how to find the net with a small ball as well as the big one. Limerick initially responded well with a finely struck Nicky Quaid point, but then Cork seemed to take hold of the game, scattering the scoreboard with points to charge six in front, with Cusson looking their greatest threat. The expected Cork onslaught and Limer collapse didn't materialise at this stage. Brian O'Sullivan, Alan O'Connor and Quaid again kept Limerick in touch. But with eight wides in the opening 26 minutes, they couldn't take full advantage of a Cork team who didn't look all that interested. And three late scores from Dennis Walsh's outfit, including John Gardner's third of the night, reopened a six-point gap by half-time. Cork didn't exactly set the world alight in the second half either, but still had too much for their opponents. Patrick Corgan claimed five of the first six points of the half to stretch them even further clear. Limerick never gave up the fight, but even when substitute Thomas O'Brien squeezed the slitter through for a goal, there still wasn't a sense that a comeback was on the cards. Cork barely in second gear had an answer for everything, and after Cusson took his tally for the night to 1-5, Kean McCarthy made the scoreline even more flattering with a late goal. Lacklustre, but rather easy in the end for Cork, 2.21 to 114. So the team in crisis last year with an easy win over the team in crisis, I suppose, this year. Tomás, as Joanne said there, you know, it really wasn't much of a game, to be honest with you, but Cork always had enough of them. Yeah, and it was a bit like last weekend as well with Offaly, you know, stayed with Cork for long periods of the game. Uh, Limerick, to their credit as well, stayed there for maybe a good 50 minutes of the game and suddenly then Cork upped another level and uh, put away the scores and none more so impressive than the, the, the big man at number 14, uh, 6 or 7, Michael Cusson, you know. And made the switch from the football and uh, he looks like an asset. Yeah, he's made a switch. I suppose, and like the, the, the 14 shirt now, there's a serious bit of yeah. competition between Izaki and himself for that for that, for that uh, key spot. And uh, he would be happy with his return last night. I mean, 1 5 was a very, very good mm-hmm. return from play, but the, the jury is still out, as, as a fellow would say. A couple of big tests coming up in the next couple of weeks in, with Tipperary and Kilkenny on the uh, forefront. Ah, uh, sure, yeah. Okay, now time for us to take a break here on Sunday Sport, but there's still plenty more to come here on the programme, including Dublin and Tip in the league, Corrafin and St. Gold's at the All Ireland Club football semi final. And that special report on the new hurling helmet regulation. Back again shortly. Welcome back again to Sunday Sport. Well, we're going to turn our attention to football for the next while here on the programme. Now, last weekend, the All-Ireland Club football semi-final between Corrafin and St. Gauls became a victim of the weather. So, the champions of Galway and the champions of Antrim had to go back to Parnell Park again last night to resolve the issue. And eventually they did. Commentator is Jimmy McGee. Covering player back there and well covered too is Tony Goggins losing possession and the ball's in the net. It's in the net for St. Goals. It looked like it cleared for a moment for Curafin, but eventually it was that inevitable ghosting CJ McGarty who finished it in the net. is free and there's two defenders out of the line now and a chance for Currafin to set up something a real chance Kevin Kieran Comer the captain with his left foot and this time the umpire has to dig for the flag and put it up Paul Fingers reaching for it Way they go again, said Galt, and they're coming at speed, and this is an 
the left hand side here, Sean Kelly, red run. And McGurty, the left footer that's perfect. And another point for McGurty, although this time it's gone to the brother, and this time it's Killer. Good job there for St. Gaul's. Good play by St. Gaul's. Sean Burke on the break. Sean Burke with a shot. St. Gaul's with another point. Three for Corifan. Chance with the ball in the net. Ball is in the net. Kieran Cobra, the captain. But the man who will get the plaudits and the man who will get his name in the Connor Tribune for sure this coming week. The question that St. Gaul's will be asking, where was he when the ball came in? Well, there he is. That's the, I think they used to call a square ball, but Kieran Cobra has stuck it in the net. Knocked down by Gallagher to McCarty and up to this left half back who's had a splendid match and deserves a score and got it to Sean Kelly for St. Gaul's. Truly is anybody's game for the right to go meet the Clare champions in the All Ireland final. A chance for Adam Gallagher. Stewart made the chance for him. Tries to drag it in, pull it in, and succeeds in so doing. Of course, 50 50. Donovan gets his share of it. Breaks out now to Ronan Steed. Good looking ball inside. The whistle's gone. Ball is being fouled. half-hearted attempts there for, to get a penalty decision but well, maybe they weren't quite as half-hearted as you might think but Kieran Comer is a man who's just happy to take his point one little short ball played it was played short but at a time when he was fouled and about to be fouled anyway Steed into O'Donovan, tries to bring it in from his right, does successfully do that. And it's a very good point by Alan O'Donovan. Great win again by Fitzgerald. What a player he is and his experience, so valuable. As I said in the introduction, two colour thing. Two Corathin men are down injured at the moment. One after a little bit of a set two with uh, Anto Healy, the man down in that case was Aidan Donlan. And now the linesman has come into the referee to tell him what he saw, and it was right in front of the linesman between number six with his outstretched hands there, Anto Healy and Aidan Donlan. I thought that's the second yellow card for Anto Healy. And indeed on right it is, and off he goes. Across the face of an open goal, and beautifully taken here. But can he screw it in? Yes he can, and he does. And CJ has done the business again. What a day for the 21-year-old. Alan Burke on the ball for, for Curafin, the tackling and the marking back and the closing of spaces is very good from St. Gaul's. But there's still the chance presents itself. And that looks like a good one, and it is a good one for Curafin. And 
And on the break here is Nidlock. Nidlock has brought down. And this sort of fouling is not going to do Curriffin any good at all because it's merely presenting chances to St. Gauls. One yellow.